Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here for Discovery Day. Um, we are at our new time this week on Tuesday, um, and so we look forward to having you join us um, on Tuesdays at 1030 throughout the summer. Um, but we have a great story in store for everybody today, um, and so we're really excited to get started. Um, before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, the Chickasaw Nation and the Inasmuch Foundation um, for making Free Family Fund possible here at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, this is our museum. We're located in Midtown, Oklahoma City, um, kind of near downtown. Um, and it is the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And here at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, we believe in telling Oklahoma's story through its people. Um, and so with each Discovery Day, we love to highlight a, a Hall of Fame inductee. Um, and so this week, it's one of my favorites. It's Oklahoma Hall of Fame member um, John Harrington. He was inducted in 2019. Commander Harrington has spent more than 330 hours in space. Um, he was the 143rd person and the first Native American to walk in space when he flew into outer space in 2002 aboard the space shuttle. Um, as a retired astronaut, Commander Harrington spends his time promoting STEM learning and education for students around the country. And he evil, even has traveled across the country on his bike. So he's traveled from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast just on his bike, which is pretty remarkable. Um, and just to add to some of his more, some of his also already remarkable feats, um, while working as an astronaut with NASA, Commander Harrington spent 10 days underwater aboard the NEMO-6 mission. He spent time exploring the ocean floor and coming face to face with some of nature's coolest features. Um, so in honor of Commander Harrington's 10 days spent underwater, we're going to read a story um, about some sea creatures today. Um, and we are going to read Nugget and Fang, Friends Forever, or Snack Time. Um, and that is by Tammy Sauer, um, illustrated by Michael Slack. Um, and so let me go ahead and stop my share and get switch over my camera. Awesome. So there's the story. Um, and so let's get started. Nugget and Fang, Friends Forever, or Snack Time. All righty. In the deep, deep ocean lived two best friends, Nugget and Fang. They did everything together. See how much bigger Fang is than Nugget? That's a little fish compared to a big shark. They swam over, glug. They swam under, glug, glug. They swam all around, glug, glug, glug. Life was close to perfect. Until it was time for Nugget to go to school. So look, the crab's holding up a stop sign. He's saying no to Fang. Um, only many minnows allowed. So there goes Nugget waving goodbye. Bye, Fang. On Monday, Nugget was busy with reading. Today's story is about three little minnows and a big bad shark. A big bad shark, ha, said Nugget, impossible. <laughs> See, they're reading on the, the clamshells for their book. It's the three little minnows. Nugget was busy with math. So it looks like we have a word problem here. But what if there were 10 minnows and a shark came along and ate four of them? How many minnows are left? Is this a trick question? A shark would never do that, said Nugget. And Nugget was busy with science. Here goes the teacher. Sharks are scary. Here's the proof. There he is, he's holding up the food chain and there's the shark eating all the sea creatures. Here goes Nugget again. This stuff on the poster isn't true, said Nugget. My best friend is a shark. Have you lost your gills? Sharks and minnows can't be friends. Hello, sharks eat minnows. Nugget was shocked and also apparently delicious. 
All of them are saying he can't be friends with the shark. That afternoon, Nugget explained it all to Fang. Sharks are toothy. Sharks are scary. Sharks and minnows can't be friends. Sounds fishy to me, said Fang. It's true. See, said Nugget. He held up his test. Then he swam very far, far away. And so his test said, sharks eat A, minnows, B, rusty license plates, C, surfers, or D, all of the above. And he got an A plus for saying all of the above. Uh-oh. Fang's heart sank. There was nothing he could do about being toothy. But he needed his best buddy back. He had to prove he wasn't scary. See how sad he looks? On Tuesday, many minnows had a surprise visitor, a very big surprise visitor. The visitor gave Nugget his friendliest smile. Oh my algae, said Nugget. It's Fang. Look at Fang. Fang's all dressed up. Oh, Fang looks like he, he dressed up as a mermaid. But this, this classmate still saw through it. Shark, swim for your lives. So even the mermaid couldn't, couldn't convince them otherwise. On Wednesday, Fang tried a different approach. See? He sent flowers. How nice. Dear Nugget, I'd love to have you over for dinner. Sincerely, Fang. Oh, he even wanted to invite him for dinner. Uh-oh, what do his friends have to say? He wants to eat you for dinner. Holy mackerel, said Nugget. Maybe inviting Maybe inviting Nugget to dinner was not the best idea for Fang. On Thursday, Fang tried everything he could think of. A tattoo. If you look real close, he's got a tattoo of, of little Nugget on his arm, or on his fin. Um, he tried a special delivery with the squid spelling out, you're fantastic. He tried a song and dance, see, with his own marine band, but nothing worked because there's Nugget still looking pretty terrified. Oh no. On Friday, Fang was out of ideas. All alone, he swam over, blub. He swam under, blub, blub. He swam all around. Blub, blub, blump. Life was not even close to perfect. There he is. He's trying to hide. What was that thwump, though? Spang was so busy boo-hooing, he didn't notice a net drop. Down, down, down. Right on the mini minnows. Oh, no. They feel seasick, even. Uh-oh, they're going to be catch of the day. Looks like the mini minnows are in a bad spot. The net pulled up, up, up. Somebody, help! Fang squinted. Nugget? See, there's Nugget screaming for help. He had to do something. But what? What was Fang going to do? Fang fanned his gills. He wrung his fins, then, uh-oh, what's, what's Fang gonna do? Ping, Fang had a plan. So Fang has a plan. Oh, and it says danger, shark sighted, big sharp teeth. What's Fang gonna do? Fang's big shark, sharp teeth chomped Fang's big sharp teeth chewed. Fang saved the mini minnows. Oh, yay. Fang to the rescue. All the minnows stared. 
I know, I know, said Fang. I'm toothy. I'm too scary. I'm too shark. Now they're all staring at him at, right after he saved them. Wait, said Nugget. Nugget swam toward Fang. There were 10 minnows, he said, and a very special shark came along. How many friends are there all together? There was only one answer. In the deep, deep ocean lived 11 friends. They swam over, glug. They swam under, glug, glug. They swam all around, glug, glug, glug. And everyone was all smiles, especially you know who. So look at Fang, he's got his big bright smile on. You can see all of his teeth. Uh, everybody else is smiling, even Nugget. And you see they've changed, they've changed the sign for Fang. He's a vegetarian shark eating his vegetables. Awesome. So that was our awesome story about Fang and Nugget. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and jump right into craft time now. Um, and so our craft time today is going to be one of the deep sea creatures that we're friends um, with Fang and Nugget. Um, and so today we are going to be making our very own seahorse. Um, and so today what we're going to need is we're going to need a paper plate. We're going to need a couple pieces of paper um, like I have right here. We're going to need two different pieces of tissue paper. And then we're going to need a googly eye. Um, we're also going to need some crayons and some glue and maybe some scissors. Um, you might need some parents help um, or some adult help for some, some, from some steps, and that's okay. Um, but I, my, before I get started, my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to color the back of my plate um, so that my seahorse has like a background. Um, and I'm going to do green so it'll match my green tissue paper. Um, but you can use whatever color you want. If you have like red, you could use red. Um, and it doesn't even have to match. You could make a rainbow seahorse um, or just any other kind of color you want. Uh-oh, my crayon broke. So I'm going to have to peel off a little more of the, the wrapper there um, and just get back to coloring once I get that finished. And so I'm going to do my best to get as much of this plate colored um, as I can because I want my seahorse to be nice and green. Um, I feel like you see green seahorses in the wild. So that's what I'm going for. But again, like I said, you can go for any color. Um, and we'll go ahead and I'm about finished. Go ahead and just got this last little part right here. And so there we go. I got the body of my seahorse colored in. And a little more, a little couple more areas I just want to touch up. Alrighty. So now that I have my seahorse colored in like that, um, the next step is we're going to take this tissue paper and then we're going to rip it up to provide the skin of the seahorse. Um, and so seahorses do have skin um, and they use it in many cases as camouflage in the ocean to hide them from predators. Um, so they look kind of leafy sometimes. They kind of look like, you know, a, a, a sea plant or something like that, something you'd find in the ocean. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going for today with my tissue paper. Um, but again, you can do whatever color you want. Seahorse, I think, live pretty much everywhere in the oceans. Um, you can see them at some aquariums here, I think. I think maybe the Oklahoma City Zoo even has some. Um, but I don't know if they have them this colorful. So that's where we get to come in with our imagination and make our seahorses look however we 
want. So I'm going to go ahead and alternate the colors of tissue paper I'm using so that it looks like a camouflage pattern, kind of. And so we're going to slowly make our way up. Um, filling in that seahorse's body as we go. Um, and as we see here, you can crumple up the tissue paper, you can keep it flat, um, whatever you want to do. There's not really a right or wrong answer. Um, so I'm just trying to keep it spaced out enough that there's not a whole lot of repeating color. I want my seahorse to be as colorful as possible. So I'm going to put this right here by this pink piece. And so there's all sorts of kinds of seahorses in the world. Um, and I think my favorite fact about seahorses, I don't know if anybody knows this, is that the male seahorses are actually the ones that carry the babies. So they get pregnant. Um, but why the, the female seahorse gives him the, the male seahorse the eggs. And so they hatch out of the male. And so if you get the chance later, you should go look up seahorses on the internet um, with your parents' supervision, of course. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and keep putting on the tissue paper to do the skin for my seahorse. Um, has anybody ever seen a seahorse? So I have not seen one in the wild, but I've been fortunate enough that I've gone to the zoo um, and I've been to a couple aquariums that have had seahorses. Um, and they're pretty, pretty neat to look at. Yeah, but I'm about halfway done here putting the, the tissue paper on my seahorse's body. So we're making pretty good progress. I don't know what all colors seahorses come in the wild, but um, I think some live on the coral reefs. Um, so I'm sure there's some very, very colorful seahorses that live in the world. Um, but they obviously they live in the oceans. Um, so I don't think we have anybody that has any seahorse living in their backyard in Oklahoma. Um, you might have to go down to the ocean to go see some seahorse. Or like I said, at the zoo or an aquarium. Um, green one right here. All right, we're making good progress with our color. And just pink over here. So I just need a couple more pieces, it looks like, to finish out the top of my seahorse. Um, get it all covered with tissue paper. Let's do right here for the green. I think that's a good spot. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So I need to do some more pink on there. Let's do pink. I think right there is a good spot for the pink. That looks good to me. So I think I need to do another piece of pink right here. Awesome. And some green in here. And one more piece of green. That's a good spot. And I'll finish it with one piece of pink right at the top. Um, I got a little one right here, and I think that's a perfect fit. Awesome. So there's the body of my seahorse. It's got the skin on it now. Um, so the next thing our seahorse is going to need um, is it's going to need a head. Um, and so we're going to use our construction paper that we have here. Um, and you can use any kind of color construction paper. I'm going to use black and red because that's what I have available to me today. Um, and so I'm going to trace out what the head's kind of going to look like. And so I'm going to draw like a half circle here. Um, and then I'm going to bring it in and kind of 
trace it in, kind of make it a three quarters of a circle without finishing it. And then I'm gonna draw out here like a beak kind of, um, except instead of doing like a beak like that, we're gonna put another smaller little circle over here. And that is gonna be the head of our seahorse. Um, and so I'm gonna use my scissors to cut that out of my black piece of paper. Um, and we're still gonna need our black piece of paper to do, um, I'm gonna do one black fin here once I get this glued on. And then I'm gonna use my red piece of paper to do some additional fins um, and make it kind of camouflaged. So I'm cutting around the, the line I trace. Kind of getting it cut out so I can glue this to my seahorse. Um, and like I said, this is gonna be its head um, with its beak and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna flip it over. See how it's got the white lines on there. I'm gonna flip it over. Um, and so kind of lay out where I wanna put it on my seahorse. And so I'm gonna glue right here where I'm gonna glue it to the plate. And then I'm gonna put a little glue on the plate as well. Um, so there's extra glue to make sure it'll stick nicely. And then I'm gonna Press it down. I'm gonna press real, 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 real hard. Um, so I think we're good there. Um, and so I'm gonna draw that fin um, that's gonna go on my seahorse as well. And so I'm gonna use this straight edge. So that's one little piece that I actually don't have to cut out. Um, and so I'm gonna draw a fin just kind of like that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out so I can glue that to the back of my seahorse. So I'm almost done cutting this out. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of lay out where I want this to go. I think it's gonna kind of go right there. Um, and so I'm gonna put glue on the back side of it. Um, again, on where I put the white glue, so the white glue is face down and it's not gonna be noticeable. And I'm gonna put some glue, being very careful not to pull up the tissue paper I already put down. Um, but if I do that a little bit, it's okay because the, the fin's gonna cover it. Um, and so there's my fin. Um, and so now I'm gonna do um, a little bit more um, camouflage. Um, and so I'm gonna use this red piece of paper to do some camouflage. Um, and so I'm gonna show y'all a neat little trick. Um, and so if you'll fold this over and half once on um, hamburger and then you fold it in half one more time hamburger again and then you do it one more time awesome so i'm gonna draw now my fins and they're all gonna be about the same size because i'm gonna draw it once here and then I'm gonna cut it out. Um, but if you can't do that, that's okay. Um, you might need to, to just draw one at a time. Um, and so I'll do it that way too. And so the fins are kind of gonna look like this. And so we'll just go ahead and cut that out. Let me show you what it'll look like cut out. Um, and so I'm gonna do about eight fins for the back and the spine of my seahorse. Um, you can do them um, however you want. This is how I'm gonna do mine because um, I kind of want my seahorse to look like it belongs on a coral. So it's kind of leafy, if that makes sense. Um, and so here's how they, those are gonna look. Um, and then you're just gonna glue it to the back like that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that with my red. And do that same shape. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So 
So that's one way to get it cut out. And this will get you multiples at once. Um, but like I said, you can also do it one at a time. Um, for me, I'm going to do a few of the red and a few of the black. I'm going to alternate it. Um, so that's one way to get several fins at once. Um, so I'm going to use some of those. Um, but you can also, like I said, just go ahead and draw them on your piece of paper. And I'm going to do a couple more like that. Um, so y'all can see those. So that's about how that looks. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach these to the back of my seahorse so it has all of its fins. I'm going to put the black fins on my seahorse's head, actually. And I'm going to do one kind of like right here. And again, just kind of keeping that white crayon down um, so that you don't see it. I'm going to do one here. There we go. I do one here. And then the rest I'm going to do, so see, see how that kind of looks? The rest I'm going to do are going to be my black ones that I cut out. So those are just going to do the same thing. You kind of glue along this little edge of the plate. And just go ahead and stick them and attach them. Awesome. All righty. So I'm going to adjust those a little bit so you can see them a little bit better. And I'm going to do one more there at the bottom. Just like that. I'm going to push real hard. Awesome. So there's my fins on my seahorse. There's the body of my seahorse. I need one last thing for my seahorse. Um, and that is an eyeball. Um, and so I have one googly eye here and I'm going to put some glue on the back of it. Um, and I'm also going to put some glue where I'm going to stick it on the horse, on the seahorse's head. And voila, push it down, make sure it stays good. And there is your seahorse. Um, so I'm going to go ahead um, and switch over my camera so y'all can see that finished product. Um, and here y'all go. Here's what your finished seahorse will look like. Awesome. So thank you so much for joining me here for Discovery Day this week. Um, I hope y'all had fun with our story with Nugget and Fang um, in making seahorses this week. Um, but thank you so much, like I said, and we can't wait to spend uh, time with y'all again next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.